Currently, cities account for about 75% of the world's energy consumption and are responsible for over 70% of the global greenhouse emissions. The way cities are planned, built and managed is key to reducing carbon emissions and keeping global warming within the limits of 1.5 degrees Celsius as set by the Paris Agreement of 2015 on climate change. Efforts of city authorities must translate into better and sustainable urban environments that result in improved air quality, sustainable use of ecosystems, cleaner energy, reduction of overall energy consumption, and greenhouse gas emission, and improved waste management. So in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, to address the devastating impacts of climate change, we can't continue with the business as usual approach. It is important that we change the game. I strongly believe that Afghan is the game changer. Afghan therefore has a critical role in supporting the African Union Commission in its commitment to climate action. Afghan is expected to be fully committed to enhancing mobilization of climate finance and enhance its access to all the 55 African countries. This will help Africa to deal with this issue seriously. Because this is an issue that Africa must confront head on if Africa hopes to, 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 to develop. Africa is the richest continent on the planet Earth in as far as raw, raw materials are concerned. Yet it is a paradox that the richest is also the poorest in as far as the living conditions of these people are concerned. This is a paradox that we can actually reverse as a people. Yes, we can, the historical reasons to justify what is there today, but we cannot live in history forever. Other countries were also colonized, for example. But they have marched on. So it's time that Africa took its position in its own hands and worked as one unit. If we are going to negotiate for compensation, which is our right, because Africa, for example, has got got also one of the biggest carbon sinks in the world, the second largest of the Amazon, the Congo forest. So Africa needs to be compensated. But if we go as Kenya, we go as DRC, Nigeria, Guinea, Senegal, Egypt, Algeria, South Africa, then we will not listen to you. They keep on taking you round and round and round. I've told you because I've told you I've been to these international conferences, these COP conferences. The resolutions are being passed. You can talk until your voice is hoarse. But after that, people pack up and go. Heads of state jump or come in on jets, land and quick there to go and make speeches, making speeches back on the jets and go back, they wait for the next other conference next year. So the people who are just going, doing those conferences, they move from one conference to another conference. Each, each year they take two months or three months camping in those conferences. But nothing concrete comes out of them. We must make sure that something concrete comes out of those conferences. The African Union can be the champion of, of this. African Union should be able to speak more effectively on behalf of the rest of Africa if the African government give it the, the power and the mandate to do so. And that's the reason why I've offered myself to run 
for the position of African Union Chairmanship. I hope that I will be able to use that position effectively to represent Africa, to make sure that Africa claims this century. I finish by telling you the story I would tell of an African lion. African lion, there are several African lions. In the soccer, those of you who know soccer, 